some Democrats are actually backing Congressman Keith Ellison as the next leader of the Democratic National Committee. And uh, relatively unknown Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan is trying to unseat Nancy Pelosi from her longstanding post as House Minority Leader. Syndicated radio host Stacey Washington is with us. And Stacey, um, uh, the, uh, the Democrats, I got to tell you something, it's really amazing that they were tone deaf for the last several years, tone deaf going into the election, and they've become even more tone deaf afterwards because they're lurching so much further to the left, it's hard to believe. You know, Charles, I thought it was kind of interesting as well. When I thought of all of the candidates, there are people that they might bring forward. Keith Ellison was one of the last individuals that I would ever even consider. Considering the election result, considering the hardcore moves to the left that the Obama administration has made over the past eight years, and the anger that Americans feel towards that, the lack of focus on jobs, um, the failed energy policy, the foreign policy that's in the can, then they choose someone or are considering someone like Keith Ellison, who is an extremist. Charles, this man has just made a visit to Mecca funded by a group connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. So we're, we're talking about someone who is too extreme for even people on the hardcore left of Democrats. Even when he was coming up, I know he, uh, he, was, he was dealt with the, you know, the communist movement and things like that. Hey, listen, Stacey, I know that you're not on the left, but can you help me understand what this is all about? I mean, the, uh, you know, do, they, do they need some sort of a, a Tea Party movement of their own? Well, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the Tea Party because that was so organic and natural. The issue, Charles, is that their bench is very, very shallow right now. They don't have a lot of up-and-coming young talent that's connected to lots of different constituency groups in America. Their, their base is just in, in a state of disarray. So I, I really see them as having to reassess their party platform and bring it more in line with more Americans. It's fine to have um, aspirational goals and to have things that you'd like to fix in the, say, educational sphere, but the Democrats are trailing on these issues. They're not leading. They don't have innovative ideas or policies. And the problem with that is demonstrated by this lack of a clear pick for the DNC head. Uh, and, and I want to ask you also uh, big news now uh, uh, because former Green Party uh, presidential candidate Jill Stein apparently has raised enough money uh, now that she can so go after recounts. She wants Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, $4.7 million already raised. I mean, what exactly does she think she's getting out of this? Or is she being used uh, even perhaps by, say, a likes of a George Soros and or Hillary Clinton who may want this recount but not want her name on it? You know, Charles, I, I saw something interesting this morning over at the Hill by writer Mary Chastain, and she talked about the big deal with Donald Trump saying that he wouldn't go forward with prosecution on Hillary emails, uh, Hillary Clinton's email scandal. And I thought it was interesting. She points out that the thing that the Clintons crave the most is power and to continue to have influence in Washington, D.C., and by forgiving her, he would take away that spotlight. And so this connects to Jill Stein and that I've seen a lot of discussion online about people really suspecting what you just said, that this is really a ploy by the Clintons to get the recount done without having their name attached to it. And I find it hard to believe that Jill Stein would be used in that way. Um, but I think it's unfortunate because it's time to move on. We're in the transition and President-elect Donald Trump will be seated and inaugurated uh, in January of 2017. And that's what we need to be looking towards. Don't you find some delicious irony, though, over the idea that uh, the, the big news story going into November 8th is that Donald Trump is going to give the winner, Hillary Clinton, a hard time? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. I mean, it, it's the holidays. I prefer not to think of them fighting and doing all of that, but it, it is a little delicious. I've been, I, I call it liberal tears. I've been drinking deeply. This is the same party that said that he wouldn't accept the election result. And instead, it's Jill Stein, possibly, you know, at the impetus of Hillary Clinton, who's refusing to accept the result. The irony is, it's outstanding. Yeah, it is. Stacey, great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks, Charles. All right.